Hello, and welcome to Adding and Subtracting Mixed Numbers. In this video, we are going to find each sum or difference for the different problems, and we're going to write our answers in simplest form. So you're going to see me showing work slightly different than you may be seeing it in school, or the way that I used to teach it, where I'd rewrite the problem vertically up and down, add an equal sign, and move over to the right as I did the problem. But over time, I've decided that I want my students to have better math habits and to get better at algebra procedures, even when they're not doing algebra work. And algebra works down. So to do problem number one, three and five, six, plus four and three sevenths, the first thing I would do is rewrite the problem with blank fractions. Three with a fraction plus four and a fraction. And then go to find my common denominator. Now the two denominators I have are six and seven. And with these two, they are relatively prime to each other. That means they don't have any factors in common. And when two numbers are relatively prime, when two numbers do not have any factors in common besides one, that means the way to find a common denominator is you can just multiply them by each other. For example, 6 times 7 gives us 42, and 7 times 6 gives us 42. And once you have a common denominator, you find the numerators that go along with that. So if we did 6 times 7, we must do 5 times 7, and that is 35. If we did 7 times 6, we must do 3 times 6, and that is 18. Once you have your mixed numbers with a common denominator, you can then start adding. Now, the denominator is going to stay the same. And the numerator, I add the numerators, 35 plus 18. 35 plus 18 is 53. If you can do these in your head, that's great, but you do not have to do them in your head. You can write the work down on the side. And once you do the fraction part, then you do the whole number. 4 plus 3 is 7, and we have the fraction 7 and 53 over 42, which does give us a slight problem. Since 53 over 42 is improper, we have to make it a mixed number or make it proper. So I will do 53 divided by 42. 42 goes into 53 one whole time, and you get a remainder of 11. That means when we divided, we got a whole number of one. We already have seven. So we'll take our whole number of one and add it to the seven we have, it becomes eight. There's 11 left over as our remainder that goes in the numerator, and our denominator, 42, stays the same. So let's do another example. 7 and 7 eighths minus 4 and 3 fourths. Again, the first thing I'm going to do is show my work in an algebra format, which is working down. The 7 comes straight down, the fraction bar is straight down, the minus sign I write underneath the minus sign, I put a 4 under the 4 and a fraction bar under the fraction bar. Staying organized like this is good algebra habits. Now, as far as finding a common denominator, one of the tricks that can help you do that a little quicker is sometimes one of your denominators, like four, can multiply to be another denominator. If you look for that first, you can save yourself a lot of time. So four times two is eight, which means I must do three times two and get six. And over here, it's just eight times one gives us eight, and seven times one gives us seven. And now that I have a common denominator, I can start subtracting. So the denominator is going to be an eight. And the numerator is going to be 7 minus 6. You subtract the numerator. 7 minus 6 is 1. And then subtract your whole numbers. Four, sorry, 7 minus 4 is 3. And our answer is 3 and 1 eighths. I'm going to do one more example that is slightly different because it's not two mixed numbers. It's a whole mixed number with a whole number. It is 12 and 1 6 plus 7. So I don't have to, but I'm going to make 7 into a mixed number by just making it 0, 6. Again, I'm doing that because it's a good habit for later if it comes up with subtraction. Sometimes you don't need to add 0, 6 or a fraction with a numerator of 0. You can just do your adding however you want. But if it is a subtraction problem and the whole number is first, then you would have to add the fraction the fraction part in with the zero as a numerator. Since you cannot remember, I just do it all the time. And since I always add in the fraction part, I never forget when it's needed. So again, my denominator is six, the denominator is the same, we can keep the six. You add the numerators, one plus zero is one. And then you can add your whole numbers. The ones place in this case, seven plus two is nine, and one plus zero is one. 
that is 12 and 1 6 plus 7 and 0 6 is 19 and 1 6. So again, when you're going to add mixed numbers, if you want to have your work done algebraically, you rewrite the line underneath the problem with the whole numbers the same and the operation symbol the same. Then you find your common denominators and then you can solve the problem. Thank you.